Hey, since it's been a couple months since my last update video, I thought we were well overdue for another one. And my god, what a difference a couple of months makes. With Navigator, I'm used to there being long stretches of time when absolutely nothing is happening whatsoever. But it seems like within the past few weeks, a lot's been going on all at the same time. So unlike my previous update videos, where I more or less focus on one major development, this time I have three things I want to touch on. They're more or less unrelated, but like I said, they all happened around the same time, so after you watch this video, you'll basically be totally caught up with everything going on in the Navigator universe. I'm gonna get this one out of the way first, because it'll take the shortest amount of time, and because it's basically plugging my own channel. But for those of you who are unaware, my new channel, The George Wood Archive, went live a couple months ago, and the response has already been pretty great. I've been posting a new or lost George Wood related video to the channel about every week or so, and some of the videos are legendary. Stuff like George's interview on the Wealthy Speaker Show, the tribute to George Wood, and my personal favorite, My Fish Talks to Me. I'm gonna keep posting videos as long as I continue to find them, so I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody who sent me links so far. And I especially want to thank Lethal Bubbles, who, about a month ago, posted about 25 links to unlisted videos, most of which were ones I was having trouble finding myself. For everyone who hasn't checked it out, I'll post a link to the archive in the video description. But for now, let's move on to the real big updates. I guess it was good to start the video by talking about the archive, because it was actually my work in putting that channel together that led me to this next update. As many of you know, the first video I uploaded on that channel was George Wood and Tom Allen's interview on The Wealthy Speaker Show. One of the main topics of discussion in that interview is George and Tom's second company, Avatoy, and specifically its role in putting together the Navigator Cruise. Listening to the interview for the first time in over a year made me remember how utterly terrible their website was, and feeling nostalgic, I decided to head over to Avatoy.com to give it another visit. But when I did, something weird happened. I was greeted with a huge domains page, saying the avatoy.com domain name was for sale. At first I thought I put in the wrong URL, that maybe it was avatoy.org or net or something like that, but I checked the interview and yes, I had it correct all along. As disappointing as it was, avatoy.com had been taken offline and I feared it had been lost forever. Well thank god for the internet wayback machine because it has several captures of avatoy.com before it was taken down. So as a memorial to what we lost, let's take one final look at Avatoy's website. In the complete history, I more or less glanced over the website. I believe I called it primitive in passing, but that's about it. But calling it primitive was being far, far too kind. It was shit, and there's no sugarcoating that. I know in my last update I took the War of Awards website to tax for being barely functional, but their website is a work of artistic genius when compared to Avatoy's. When you put avatoy.com into your internet browser, this is the home page that greets you. You'll notice that you're not even given any navigation tabs or anything of the sort, just links to two years, 2008 and 2013, with no indication whatsoever as to what they might signify. Alright, if that's what we have to work with, let's see where they lead, starting with 2008. Turns out this entire section of the website is completely devoted to giving information about the Navigator Cruise. There's sections for basically everything you could want, including a full schedule of events, a page-long press release, and even a detailed write-up of Cloris Leachman's career up to that point. The big question I have, though, is why? Let's ignore the fact that I'm still entirely unconvinced that this cruise ever happened. Even if it did, what good is it to leave this website online, entirely unchanged, over a decade after it took place. And everything just gets weirder when you click the 2013 tab. In the documentary, I believe I described this section as Tom Allen's personal diary, but that doesn't begin to tell the whole story. What this is, in truth, seems to be a collection of messages and memos meant solely for the eyes of Navigator and Avatoy staff, and no one else. This can clearly be seen by looking at the featured post titled Sticky Notes Front Burner which is literally a to-do list of important items for staff to focus on. Obviously, going into detail on every little post would be both boring and pointless, so instead I'll focus on one big thing. In the documentary, I mentioned that the website is a mirror into Tom Allen's mind, and after looking at it in more detail, I stand by that 100%. I've described Allen as someone who has unbelievably grandiose plans, 
but none of the competence to pull them off. This website absolutely speaks to that. As just a brief example, a series of posts from 2015 all focus on streaming esports events onto theater screens. Navigator and Avatoy, as far as I know, have never hosted any esports events. So maybe this was some ridiculous plan to get the Navigator Awards broadcast in movie theaters? Or maybe this is a relic of some aborted attempt to move into the esports field? Given Navigator's spotty and rapidly shrinking internet presence, it's impossible to say for sure. But perhaps the biggest testament to the failure of Alan's grandiose plans is this entry, a YouTube series, that lists potential ideas for YouTube videos. Of the 24 ideas listed, exactly one has been made into an actual video. Entry D, which I'm assuming refers to the Geico parody George Wood and Cloris Leachman made. Other than that, nothing. The list itself is fascinating in its choice of subject matter. First, seriously, what the hell is up with their obsession with Cloris Leachman? She's literally in half of the list. Furthermore, for an organization trying desperately to stay current, their creative ideas show an incredible lack of awareness of the pop culture zeitgeist. This post was written in 2013. And who the hell in 2013 was talking about We Are the World, Beavis and Butthead, or Obama Girl? These things are years, perhaps even decades old at that point. I know it's not impossible to make something entertaining and funny out of pop culture touchstones from decades past, but given Navigator's track record with comedy, do you really expect them to pull it off? Have you ever played with some Again, I could dissect every little post, but I'd basically just repeat the same conclusion, so I'm not going to do that. I will mention a few more posts that viewers of this video might be curious about. There are a few posts that list Avatoy's top games from the years 1985 to 1998. There's one post that lists every Gaming in the Clinton Years episode Navigator ever released. They're all listed twice, because of course they are, but that'll be an invaluable tool for archival purposes. And there's a post called What People Are Saying About Gaming in the Clinton Years, which is basically a collection of mostly negative comments about the videos themselves. Now, the big question overshadowing all of this is, what does Avatoy's disappearance from the internet mean in terms of the ongoing George Wood and Tom Allen saga? In a way, it means nothing, but it also means everything. Nothing because, since basically their inception, Avatoy's left almost no mark on the scene. Aside from their website, the only real notable internet presence they left was the fact that their logo was placed at the end of some of the earliest Gaming in the Clinton Years episodes. And I'm guessing that most viewers didn't rush out and Google what's an Avatoy after watching them. But as inconsequential as they were, I want to argue that their disappearance also means a whole lot. At the beginning of the year, we saw Navigator basically purge everything that wasn't related to gaming in the Clinton years from their YouTube channel. Now, at the end of the year, we're seeing the exact same thing happening again. An enormous chunk of their history is being erased from the internet with no warning. Avatoy's website, at the very least, can be archived via the Wayback Machine, but the same cannot be said for their YouTube page, which I haven't even touched on yet. Avatoy's YouTube presence was always minimal. When I started this series of videos, they had 4 subscribers, and they've jumped to 18 since. Furthermore, their videos were unlisted from the start, but they were at least accessible from a series of playlists. Those playlists, as far as I can tell, are completely gone, along with the videos within them. I think they were straight up deleted, which could be a huge loss, since I have absolutely none of them archived. If I'm wrong about all of this, please let me know, but again, I don't have a lot of hope. There are a lot of mysteries surrounding this ongoing purge, with the biggest mystery of all being why now? For years, Navigator would upload new videos at a regular, albeit rather slow, pace, until one day they completely stopped. Avatoy seemed content with letting their bizarrely primitive website and YouTube channel exist without oversight for years. Hell, their YouTube channel had remained in the exact same state since 2011, for Christ's sakes, and nobody seemed to care one way or the other. And then all of a sudden, this year, that all changed. I would never be delusional enough to take credit for this, but at the same time, it is odd that only after I released my initial videos and brought attention to these obscure corners of Navigator's history, that they all felt the need to remove them. I don't know what else could have happened that lines up that well, so if any of you have any theories, please feel free to share them in the comments. I'll leave you with one more mystery. When I first discovered all this, I wasn't prepared to accept the fact that Avatoy would just up and disappear without a trace so suddenly. So, my curiosity being piqued, I went over to the Maryland Secretary of State's website and ran a business entity search for Avatoy. And sure enough, from a legal point of view, Avatoy still exists, as per the state of Maryland. 
Their registration was renewed on April 10th, 2018, and will last until 2023, at which point they can renew it again. Their application is really interesting in that the legal name of the owner is listed not as George Wood or Tom Allen, but Navigator itself. Obviously, the connection between Navigator and Avatoy was always obvious, but this is the first time we have documented proof, and even then, I wasn't expecting it to be this direct. You may have noticed that the title of this section wasn't a statement, but a question. Because as you can see, despite the fact that they don't seem to have any online presence anymore, they still technically exist. Tom Allen wouldn't renew Avatoy's application if he didn't see some sort of benefit for keeping it around, although at this point, I'm at a complete loss as to what that benefit might be. I'm certain this isn't the last time we're going to hear the Avatoy name. Whether we hear about Alan trying to plan some new grandiose event that may or may not happen, or whether I have to scour through more Maryland legal papers to see where this trail leads, something will come of this. What it may be right now, though, is anybody's guess. Damn right he's not dead. On Halloween night, completely out of nowhere, a video was posted to YouTube entitled George Wood, The Return? It had nothing to do with Navigator, or gaming in the Clinton years, or anything that you might expect. Instead, it was a nearly three minute homage to the legendary cult TV show Twin Peaks. And what's most surprising is that it was actually genuinely entertaining. I've discussed, earlier in this video even, that Navigator usually fails at being unironically funny. This video is a refreshing exception to that rule. I'm a Twin Peaks fan, and it seems like George is too, as the video is a genuinely fun tribute to the ridiculousness that show has been known for since the early 90s. If you still haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the video description as well. Now, Twin Peaks is a show known for raising more questions than providing easy answers to those questions, and George Wood's video on Twin Peaks follows in that tradition. For one thing, this video wasn't released on Navigator's YouTube channel. It was released, apparently, on Wood's personal YouTube channel. The channel's been around since November of 2013, and this is the first video that's been posted to it since its inception. I even had to hear about it secondhand, since up until about a month ago, I had no idea that this was the actual George Wood's channel. And I'm guessing most of you didn't either, since even now it only has 16 subscribers, so hey, if you're watching this, Give our buddy George some more attention. But again, this all begs the question, why release it on some obscure channel and not on Navigator? Why is Navigator not promoting it whatsoever? Why disappear off the face of the planet for over four years, only to come back now? None of these questions have answers, since as of me writing this, George sadly hasn't uploaded anything since. In the last big rush of new George Wood videos, in 2015, we ended up getting a lot in relatively rapid succession. Here, not so much. Although there is good news, it looks like more is on the horizon. The War of Awards channel is premiering a new video called George Wood Christmas on Christmas morning, which is probably the greatest way to celebrate the birth of our Lord. What is it going to be? I have no idea. All we can do now is subscribe to his personal channel, set the premiere of the new video in our calendars, and wait. Whatever comes, it's going to be at least memorable.